So this is the big reveal. This is my latest uh, boat in the fleet, the fleet as we call it. <laughs> um, it is a sit on top. So those of you who guessed submarine, you were wrong, it's not a submarine, it's a sit on top. This is a Wilderness Systems Tarpon 140. And uh, I saw it pop up on the classifieds and uh, honestly, I just couldn't uh, pass it up. And uh, I don't have a sit on top, so I thought we'll give it a try. Um, why do people get sit on top? So a lot of people are asking that question. Why would you get a sit on top? There's a lot of advantages to a sit on top. And one is obviously it is super easy to get in and out of. So as you can see, like I'm in, right? And I can lock my feet in the pedals here. And I'm in the kayak. Easy peasy. If I want to get out, I just stand up and I'm out. So ease of uh, egress and ingress is certainly one of the features to it. Uh, the seat is pretty comfortable. You can see it almost looks like a lazy boy here. It's got a nice seat back. The, the seat back's adjustable. Uh, the bottom is adjustable. You can bring your thighs up or down. Big area for storage there in the back. And then there's a, uh, a small hatch here and then a bigger hatch up here. Uh, and this is dry storage. So you can put stuff in there, close it up, and now it can't get wet. The other thing is, if you think about it, this whole thing is full of air. So you cannot sink it. It is impossible to sink the thing because even if water gets on top, if you come over here, you can see there are holes in the hull and they go right to the bottom. So if water gets up in here, it goes right out as soon as it gets in. And so that's one of the greatest things about the sit on top. Um, a lot of people use these to fish. There are these tracks here, uh, which you can use for fishing. You can put rod holders on, you can put a fish finder on there, um, all kinds of accessories. Uh, there's another track in the back, a big area for your, uh, what would you call that thing? A tackle box in the back or a cooler. Um, places to tuck your stuff in and here. It's a nice water uh, spot there. Um, so good storage, lots of places for accessories, comfortable seat, easy to get in and out of. Now what's the drawback? I can tell you the drawback because as soon as I bought the thing, I went to put it on the roof of my car and I saw the number one drawback, this bad boy is heavy. So this is a 14 foot boat and it weighs about 68 pounds and that's empty with none of the accessories. Now this doesn't have accessories yet, but 68 pounds is pretty heavy when you're trying to lift it by yourself up on the top of the roof of your SUV. So um, if you have a friend with you, it's not so bad, uh, but by yourself, it's a little hard. Some people will use a trailer, uh, which is not a bad idea. But uh, yeah, let's get out and paddle this bad boy. One of the things about the seating position that I would like to comment on is, you know, it's nice to sit like this. It's relaxed and lazy, but it's not super efficient for paddling. So when I really want to paddle, I kind of I want to sit up um, get a little bit more of a paddling position and I I know that the, the seat back is adjustable with these things so I could pull it up if I want and make it a little bit more supportive and uh, you know that's a pro and a con right like it's so comfortable with that uh, lazy boy type seat <laughs> very comfortable and you know one of the things I didn't mention earlier um, a lot of people when they first get into kayaking their biggest fear is that they're gonna get stuck inside the thing uh, and to be honest it's really hard to get stuck inside of it um, the, the, the times that I have flipped over um, I've usually come right out I don't even know what happens and I'm out uh, and I have uh, sea kayak which has a little bit smaller of an opening most recreational kayaks have a big opening and you you flip over you're out but still that's a barrier for people so sitting on top feels a lot more uh, open right less feeling of claustrophobia um, so people like that and I think 
Uh, when I take my friends who've never been paddling before, uh, when I take them paddling, I think they will definitely appreciate that kind of unencumbered feeling or, you know, the feeling of not being trapped. Um, that is a big barrier for a lot of folks. Earlier, I talked about how easy it was to get in and out of, and it certainly is when it's shallow. Oh, hello, Mr. Kingfisher. <laughs> he flew right down the river, went right over the shore, and came back behind me. <laughs> I don't know if it got on the camera, but... Um, what was I saying? I'm so easily distracted. I don't know if you guys know this, but I have a condition called ADOS. You've probably heard of ADHD, which is uh, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. I have something that's worse. It's called uh, ADOS, which stands for Attention Deficit... Oh, shiny! Just kidding, that's not really a thing. But anyway, uh, what I was saying is, it's easy to get in and out of when there's shallow water and you can just step out. But um, when it's deeper, like it is here, I'm not sure how deep it is. Uh, it's probably about four feet deep. Um, I understand if it's really deep and it's over your head, that these are hard to get back on top of. I've never tried it. Um, I'm not gonna try it today. I might try it in a swimming pool. Um, I just don't know what's on the bottom of this river and uh, not too excited about finding it with my feet. <laughs> so, um, but what I've heard uh, in several uh, YouTube videos that I've watched, um, people say they're not as easy to get back in as it seems they would be. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is just handling the thing. There's a lot of pointy bits. Um, and I got a big scrape down my belly the other day. I got a cut on my head. Um, so just like manipulating it, trying to put it up on the car, uh, when I first got it, I, uh, I gave her a good bath, uh, washed her down uh, with some good old turtle wax car wash uh, liquid and uh, washed it down real good and then um, put a nice coating of uh, 303. So if you don't know 303, it's like a marine grade uh, armor all. It protects it from UV. Um, but anyway, um, as I was moving it around, washing it and cleaning it, um, I got a bunch of little cuts on me because, like I said, there's just little pointy bits uh, that uh, tend to snag you, which none of my other boats have. So, uh, just something to look out for. So far, I'm really happy with how it paddles. Um, it's very stable. Uh, paddles nice and straight and true. Um, it doesn't feel as heavy as it is um, because of the, of the good track. If you look at the, uh, what would we call that, the keel, the bottom, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but if you look at the bottom of it, uh, it has these grooves that go the whole length and uh, that certainly helps uh, with the tracking. You haven't seen Whammer in a while. Uh, since the uh, Bratwurst on the River episode, <laughs> he's here today helping me with filming. Thanks to you, Whammer. Appreciate it. Yeah. So uh, if you don't like the camera work, then blame him today. <laughs> uh, Whammer, the uh, Arnie Palmer is uh, courtesy of the Whammer. Mm. Very refreshing, I must say. Perfect for today. So if you like this video, click like. If you want to see more like it, click subscribe and come be my paddling buddy. And by the way, always wear your PFD, whether you're in a sit on top or a sit in or a stand on, whatever, wear your PFD. I fear that my dead cat is now in front of my frame. What do you think? Oh, yep. Kind of looks like that. Bloopers, <laughs> outtakes. <laughs> <laughs> That is not happening. <laughs> I thought I was going to pull a groin just trying to stand up. <laughs> Get a sit on top, they said. You can stand on it, they said. <laughs>